Welcome. Welcome to St. John's United Church of Christ in Lyons, Illinois. I'm Pastor Kim, and I'm delighted to have you join us for our service of worship this week. And as I say every Sunday, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. So after our announcements this morning, I'll be back with you as we begin our time of worship together. Welcome. I invite you to imagine the warmth that surrounds you, extending it to those who may be next to you or across the street or nearby. 
Imagine it actually extending beyond your walls, out into the neighborhood, the wider community, the church, and seeing it spread like the rising sun. Let it expand to everywhere. And let this be our peace. May this peace of Christ be with you. We have seen the stories of Jesus' healing ministry and how they're filled with words and deeds of healing. And when he rides into Jerusalem, the people that had hoped that he would heal the oppressive system that they were living under, and we know that his healing was not confined to just that moment in history, but it offers a new way of life that has made a case for compassion for all, especially the least of these ever since, even now. And as we move this week into Holy Week, we begin to see that our ability to forgive ourselves and others is actually the foundation that can transform and allow us to move on. So we integrate our beliefs and actions for the health of the whole. The parade of compassionate power that we celebrate as Palm Sunday this day underscored by another healing story of transformation, symbolizing our ability to find our movement, our motions, our participation of recovery. And we glorify God for beautiful words and works of wholeness and share that beauty, that treasure with others. We know that there will still be pain, but we also know that love will win. As we have approached confession each week in Lent, we've done it in such a way that we lay here the brokenness in order to begin the process of healing, putting the pieces back together. Along the way, we have acknowledged our need to restore our own holy vessels while attending to our role in the healing of community and the world, the work of healing will continue as we integrate all that we have learned with all that we will do moving forward. For now, we remember how hard it is to move forward from thinking to doing. So I invite you to please join me now in a prayer of confession Forgiving God, we have opened ourselves to healing and sometimes it is easier to pray nice prayers than to do the hard work of putting into action what needs to happen. Help us remember the sacred nature of the holy vessels that we are, fragile and susceptible to shattering and yet capable of transformation. Help us to see ourselves as you see us. Help us to believe in our ability to change and heal as you believe in us. Help us, healer. Show us our strength. Forgive our inertia and move us to move one step at a time toward greater care. I invite you to return again to that warm orb of light that lives deep within you as we began this morning. It may already be aglow with the excitement of the parade for the Palm Sunday, right? The presence of Jesus leading us on. But if you are struggling or have struggled in this season of recovery, To feel this warmth of assurance within you, do not despair. You are not the one who has to create this light. It just is. And it is a pilot light that never goes out. You will at some time begin to notice it returning to your awareness. Just know this, that you are never alone in the struggle, no matter what. Jesus is on the journey with us. 
Life's parade is not passing you by. You are part of this body of Christ, a community seeking healing and wholeness. For you, for me, for us all. So take in a deep breath to let this truth fill you and breathe out with the relief of assurance. A reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verses 1 through 8. After getting into a boat, he crossed the sea and he came to his own town. And just then, some people were carrying a paralyzed man laying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, son, your your sins are forgiven. Then some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, stand up and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, stand up, take your bed, and go to your home. And he stood up and went to his home. When the crowd saw it, they were filled with awe. And they glorified God, who had given such an authority to human beings. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, you may want to pause here for a moment and collect some of the items that were provided a few weeks ago as we began our Lenten journey together. There was a small little um, canvas Um, along with a paintbrush and some paint, as well as a a few um, pieces of sea glass. When you have them with you, let us come back and share together in a brief ritual activity. The words of Jesus we heard in this week's healing story, um, as well as those that preceded this week, um, were many. Um, But I want us to hone in on two in particular. Take heart. The French word for heart is core. And besides its reference to the physical heart organ, it also means courage. Certainly, Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem was a sign to people that they were worthy to be saved. And that was the actual meaning of the cries, Hosanna, courage, from core, courage, in the face of difficulty, and care in the face of being disheartened, go hand in hand. Healing in itself is not always an absence of illness, but rather a trust that God is holding our brokenness and we can move on in life with assurance, creating beauty even in the midst of these hard times. Hopefully, as you have glanced as at the sea glass wherever you had placed it during these weeks, you've been reminded that God restores us and refines our edges into something beautiful. And this week, I want to invite you to create an image on your canvas. You may use the paintbrush and paint provided to draw perhaps a cross as we began um, our our Lenten journey together with the sign of the cross um, marking um, from ashes to ashes, dust to dust, right? We return marking that we are beloved of God or perhaps in the shape of a heart or any any other image. Maybe it's a a palm leaf, right? For Palm Sunday. Or you might even want to use some of your sea glass. Um, Maybe putting pieces of the glass together and gluing it on your canvas to form the shape of um, a heart or a cross or um, whatever it is that you want to represent you at this time. 
And next week, as we gather um, together outside for our Easter celebration, I'd like you to bring your little mini canvases with you. Um, and we will collect and compile them together uh, so that we can display them somewhere um, as a reminder and take photos to share with one another. So now I'd like you to take a, a remaining piece of, of glass um, that you, you have with you. Take it in your hand and hold it. Hold it perhaps to your heart. Take in a deep breath and invite that spirit to show you your next steps in the healing, the furthering of healing in whatever corner of the world you find yourself in, even if it's just your home or somewhere in your neighborhood. But as you look back on this season of focusing on healing, I want you to think about what you may have learned that is worth giving away to someone else. And through your words and your actions moving forward. So take a moment to think on that. What might you have learned about yourself? What you need? What helps? And how might you share that and pass it on to others? During this next week, I invite you to keep alert for just the right moment or maybe the right person to receive a gift of beauty from the brokenness that you have held here today. I want you to give it to them. Maybe you say something like, take heart. You are not alone. Maybe it's when you see somebody as we gather in the parking lot next week at church. Wherever I invite you to think on those things. As we have been journeying together, exploring these, these stories of healing and wholeness. Now, when we gather, I want us um, to celebrate and experience the joy of, of that resurrection outside at our Easter celebration, right? I want you to really think on who might benefit from passing along a piece of this glass and just saying to them, take heart. You are not alone. Looking them in the eye, being able to say that to one another will be a beautiful, wonderful thing. Let us participate and share that joy. Crowds swelled with excitement waiting for their newly anointed one who enters the temple of the heart. And we open the gates for him to welcome our victor, this savior soldier, the warrior king who would save us from oppression and cruelty. Crowds shouted out, Hosanna, save us from those enemies that threaten to destroy us. Save us from ourselves. I cried out from the crowds that day. This one voice in a sea of people, one among many scattered one among many who carpeted the ground with coats, and palms, with hopes and dreams. There's something better in this world. To make of it what I will. I 
I placed all my passion upon this teacher, the master of bread and fishes, the deaf and blind, miracles and spectacles. But he was on a donkey, not a noble steed, self-giving and brought down low, seeking to rescue the outsider, to save us from our sins. Who was this? We questioned. And who are we? We replied. Were we disciples following him on this inglorious, triumphant road? not turn an ear to him. They made of their hearts a stone and broke him over the rock of all their hopes and fears. His trampled palms, scattered ashes. Please pray with me. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation on all our hearts this day be pleasing to you as we gather and explore your word together. Let us remember that you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So today's gospel story is another healing story. This one is about Jesus with the paralytic, the man who desperately needed the support of his friends, if he was ever going to see Jesus. And it turns out that this would be the most important moment in his life, the moment when Jesus would heal him and restore him to health. As many of you know, I have a pretty good imagination. And so, as I hear this story, I can picture this huge crowd surrounding Jesus in that house. And I can also imagine the frustration on the faces of this paralyzed man's friends when they see that they're not going to be able to get him anywhere near Jesus because there's just too many people around. Too many challenges in front of them, right? And then one of them has this brilliant idea. <laughs> he says, let's get up on the roof. Let's remove that section right over there. And if we do it right, our friend will land right at the feet of Jesus. And that is exactly what they did. You've got to appreciate the creative tenacity of his friends, right? As well as their faith and determination and getting things to actually work out that way. But wait, I didn't hear those details in our reading today. Did you? There wasn't any mention of the roof. There was no image described of the roof being torn open or cut open or of the man being lowered into a room. Did I miss that part? No. Actually, I'm just trying to see if you're paying attention. See, those details were just not there in the Matthew text. They seem to have been deliberately omitted by the author of Matthew when this version was written. See, Mark, Luke, and Matthew all have differing versions with a little bit different details in them that are included in this story. And they are details that are part of the story that we may recall just from memory 
after hearing about this story over many times. So I'm curious as to why. Have you ever thought about that? Why Matthew's telling of the story leaves this portion out? Maybe Matthew was in a hurry to get to a particular point in the story. I don't know about you, but if I've been at times kind of carried away with telling the details of a story. And sometimes I linger a little too long over them, right? Have you ever heard anyone tell a story that way? And have the details end up becoming the focus of the story? See, what happens is that we remember the details and the real meaning and point of the story sometimes, how shall I say it, um, kind of gets lost in the details. Mired in the weeds would be another way I'd put it. See, Matthew actually begins his narrative very simply. He says, people brought it to Jesus, a paral people brought to Jesus a paralyzed man lying on a mat. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, have courage, son, your sins are forgiven. See, now this was certainly the last Thing anyone gathered there was expecting to hear Jesus say at that moment. It was something that actually raised a lot of concern for the scribes who were listening to him. They quickly accused him of being a blasphemer, right? So now I'm wondering how Matthew's account, minus those roof details, sounds. What is it saying to us now? What is this story really about? How can it help any one of us from a personal perspective? See, I think it reveals that Jesus focuses on what the paralyzed man needs to hear. Jesus knows that the reasons the people brought the paralyzed man to him was for physical healing of his body. But there was something that he had to take care of first. See, Jesus' priority is responding with what he knows the man needs to hear. And he says to him, your sins are forgiven. Why? Because Jesus sees into the man's heart and knows what this man needs to hear. First things first, this is always the way Jesus does things. Then in case anybody hearing these words has any doubt, and in response to the angry negative reaction of those scribes, Jesus goes on to cure the man's physical illness with authority, the text tells us. But not before saying that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Stand up, roll up your mat, and go home. It's the only God can forgive sins. So the conclusion should be simple. Jesus is the Son of God. We've heard this story many, many times, and each time it offers a special invitation as well as a challenge. And today, that invitation is not about trying to understand and accept Jesus's power to heal physically. No, I think the challenge is actually for each of us to look at the story and see how Jesus' power to heal us spiritually may be at work. So we hear in this story Jesus inviting us to become aware of spiritual paralysis that may be keeping us from following him fully. And I know that this is the healing that I need, that we all need. But even more important, I have to accept the challenge willingly so that I can take the steps which will bring about that healing. And so, of course, I've got another question for you, right? That's how I do things. Is Jesus inviting you to go on this journey as well? If so, how might it happen? How might it happen for you, for me, for any of us? First, it's by our being able to look at how the people we encounter can be an influence in our lives. It could be by their words, by their example, by their choices, good and bad, that we reflect on. Perhaps they show us something by stepping forward and doing things that we're afraid to do. Or perhaps they give us the courage to try something which is 
really outside of our comfort zone. We all know what that's been like over the course of this last year. But then also, I want you to think about being open and honest with yourself and by expressing and owning your deepest fears, our deepest spiritual concerns, looking and owning our own brokenness and opening ourselves up in that silence and quiet of our heart to those healing words which Jesus speak to all of us. Have courage. You are forgiven. And lastly, by responding to Jesus' words, standing up spiritually, getting off the mat, which kept us from seeing what we really need to see. What keeps us paralyzed from growing and changing and moving forward? Listening with gratitude to Jesus' words. Stand up, roll up your mat, and go home. Opening our hearts to love and moving forward in joy. So once we have done this, you, me, all of us, each of us will know that we can do it over and over again. And sometimes we need help. We need the help of our friends, the help of others around us. Sometimes we may be able to do it on our own, but not likely always. No matter how we do it, the power of this story lies in the fact that it reminds us that Jesus is always always ready to forgive us and to invite us to stand up, roll up our mats, and go home, always forgiven and always loved. May you know it to be so. Amen. In your love, make us whole. May we rest in your compassion. Calm the lost, weary soul. In the warmth of your love, may your peace fill our hearts. us by your grace you console make us holy make us whole friends we know that people who were healed as we have heard those were healed by Jesus we're not afraid to ask And so now we come before the Holy One making our petitions and our desires known, trusting the work of the Spirit. Let us be together in prayer. God, you are our healer, the healer of our every ill, especially when we find it difficult to believe or trust that sorrow will end. We come before you to make our petitions known, and we ask that you hear us, hear our cries for healing of body, mind, and spirit. We know that already you are at work among us, showing us the way to recovery from all of the toxicities and grief of our time. When we cannot seem to believe it, we know that you see beauty in our brokenness. We pray for those who feel that there is no end to sorrow, that no matter what we do or how hard we work to bring peace and justice to our world, it feels like we cannot gain any traction. But yet we give thanks that we we cannot bring ourselves to the healing source of your love, that there are others around us through words and actions that bring us hope once again. 
help us to also be those, those who offer hope when we have opportunity on this parade day of compassion called life. Today, especially, we pray for the joy of, of another new grandbaby for Gail and their family. We pray for Drew and Melinda, for Roger and Janice, for Mary, Shirley, and Nancy, and for Dee Dee as she continues to heal from a broken wrist. In your love, O oh God, make us whole and holy. May we find rest and grace in your compassion. Calm those feeling lost and comfort all our weary souls. By the warmth of your love, we are healed. May your peace fill our hearts as we pray together, using the words of Jesus, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When you have no words, when you cannot find your voice, God approaches. So let us reach out to our God in the sharing of our gifts this day. Please join me in dedicating today's offering. Oh, Holy One, bless these gifts so that the world may know that you are love even when we are silent. Amen. last few weeks, we have 
seen that Jesus' healing actions often kind of get a buzz from onlookers. And this day, we've actually seen the different reactions from the crowd, shouts of adoration, and the scoff of judgment from religious officials. His words and actions seem to get one or the other praise or accusations of heresy. But he continued his work anyway. He loved those who were deemed unlovable. He proclaimed healing in the midst of despair over and over and over again. Jesus urged people to give their best in the midst of the worst circumstances. To be followers of Jesus, it's not an easy task, but it is the way that we become whole once again to participate in the holy endeavor of bringing the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, right? And as we enter this holy week, these themes will continue into a sharper focus. May we follow him even to the broken places of pain. Think on how we have asked this question each week. How can we as a church community become a health hub through our ministries and our mission in Lyons? Now I invite you to go with confidence that God is making us whole and holy, recovering our depth of love for all, and our joy of loving in this world. May the words of Jesus ring in your ears. Take heart and may the spirit hover, move and deliver salve to your soul and a spring in your step. Now, let all God's people say, Amen. Amen.